do have a dual role, at least for the time being. Uh, we did acquire a company, as Joe mentioned, uh, a lithium business within uh, for Albemarle. In the beginning of 2015, I moved over to Germany to be the managing director of that business in Germany for a period of time, and I still retain that, that role. Uh, there's several people in Albemarle uh, involved in the lithium business. My role is really for the German entities of the lithium business. But I'm happy to answer questions about lithium if you are curious as well. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna, I want to introduce the folks from Albemarle that are here, uh, that are on the leadership team. So uh, let me introduce Peggy McThurn, our plant manager, and then her leader team, Danny Wood, uh, Steve Card, and Kevin Sharp, and Jolene Wynn. So that's the group of uh, leaders from the plant. I also brought with me my leadership team for the bromine business on a global basis. So my vice presidents and directors I brought for this, uh, not just for this uh, presentation, but well, we're having our global leadership <coughs> team meeting here in Magnolia. We want to be close to our plant when we do that. So uh, Ahmed Khalifa is uh, the head of our Jordan bromine operation. So we have an operation on the Dead Sea in Jordan. Uh, let's see, who am I going to pick on next? Uh, David Croming is our uh, legal counsel. Uh, James Romano is in charge of global sales for Albemarle Bromine. Carl Meyer is the Vice President of Manufacturing across all of our sites. Uh, Jeff Bitters is in charge of talent development for uh, actually all of the Albemarle. Uh, John Barikovich, uh, the CFO for the Romanian business. And somebody's going to be upset because I forgot. Uh, Jason Spinner, uh, the head of our IT organization. Wesley Hamilton, uh, in charge of research and development. And Rob McFall, who is in charge of communications. Did I leave anybody else out? Oh, uh, Christy Roberts, I'm sorry. Uh, beloved Christy Roberts, who is in charge of HR, that just uh, wrecked my salary increase for next year. <laughs> Christy Roberts. Okay, thanks. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. I appreciate your time for us today. Just real quick about me I've been in Albemarle for four years uh, in, in a different business, which was Aluminum Alkyls. It's a business with a site in Pasadena, Texas, one in Korea, around the world. It's different chemistry, but also related to industry. I came from Dow before that uh, in various states in my career. Uh, as you can probably gather, I am not from uh, Arkansas. I'm not from Louisiana. I do have lots of Louisiana attire. I spared you the gold tie, but I did decide to wear the shirt anyway. Uh, I'm originally from the Northeast. Uh, I appreciate Ms. Pam. Got a little shout out to New Hampshire. Uh, I come from a little town that's smaller than Magnolia. Uh, which is where I grew up. I grew up uh, in a household uh, with, my, uh, with my maternal grandparents. So my dad uh, passed away when I was little, so we moved in with my grandparents. And my grandfather was a machinist, and uh, I, I've got a special place in my heart for like those who work with their hands, the folks in maintenance, very near and dear, all of that uh, I can relate to, having grown up in that family. Uh, and I'm privileged to be here. Let me tell you a little bit about the chemical industry and where that is today. Uh, we start at the top and sort of work down to what Magnolia and the Magnolia site means to Albemarle, because it means a lot. The, the chemical industry right now is in the uh, sort of in two worlds. One of it is like oil prices for some uh, elements of the chemical industry is just, it's, it's a significant drag. It pushes down our margins and it has an effect on the many of the chemical we have a piece of our business in Romney that's affected by that, given the drilling fluid that we make in Romney, that has pressure. And also, how oil goes has significant effects on the dynamics of where chemicals are made. So it certainly, when oil prices are low, it removes some of the competitiveness of shale gas, shale oil in the United States, and sort of shifts things elsewhere in the world. Europe is stronger than anybody would have predicted Europe to be five years ago. The United States is actually doing fairly well. Uh, I mean, well, well, when you compare it to the rest of the world, uh, pretty good strength in chemicals. Chemical industry is predicted to grow at about 2.7% year over year in 2016. That's good. That's better than GDP in the United States for petrochemicals. Next year, uh, IHS, which is making most of the predictions for chemical industry, they say 4%, and the year after, 5%. It doesn't look so bad in terms of underlying demand for chemicals and intermediates in the United States. China has a big impact on chemical industry. China is 
percent of the demand for chemicals in the world. So that's huge. I mean, they take a lot of product. Uh, whether they take a little bit more or a little bit less has a great impact on global chemical companies and it has an impact on us at Alpha Moral as well. China's not growing as fast as what they used to think that they were going to grow at. So again, the small inflections in that growth have an impact and has an impact on us. Uh, I'd say Europe is relatively flat. They probably do a little bit better than they thought they would be doing, but not as well as the United States or Asia. And all of that plays into the dynamics for Alpha Moral and the chemical industry. And I'm sure you all understand it on the oil side. When the oil price is low, it's tough. For Albemarle, I'm sure that all of you know the company. You probably know it better than I do. I've been in it for four years, and I've met a bunch of people here today that have 24 years of service, 27 years of service, done lots of things for us, and I think I want to give a shout out to those individuals as well as the folks in the community. There's a long tradition of support for Albemarle families. I've met so many people at our plants where uh, you know, they're son-in-law works in one area of the plant and their dad worked in another area. It's just sort of great to see the connection and really get that in this town. And that says a lot to the culture that goes on in the Magnolia plant here. Uh, Albemarle is a company of about 7,000 employees. Uh, we have just south of 4 billion in sales. Uh, we are headquartered out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So I'm not yet a pet Panthers fan. I'm not quite there yet. I know who who the quarterback is, and that's about all I can tell you about the Panthers. Um, but we moved to North Carolina from Baton Rouge. Uh, we have a great company. Uh, we've got four, four businesses within Alabama. Uh, the Bromine business, which I have the privilege of leading. We have a lithium business called Lithium and Advanced Materials because there's a few other specialty products that go along with that. We have a refining catalyst business as well as a surface treatment that surface treatment business is actually um, slated to be sold before the end of the year. We have a buyer, BASF, to buy that business from. Uh, it's a business based on, uh, Albemarle is based on core values. Uh, I've been in Albemarle for four years, and I am never impressed with the values of Albemarle in terms of respect for our people, respect for the community, about doing the right thing, and probably most of all on safety. Uh, I don't know the, the current number of for Magnolia. I know it's north of 3 million man hours work without an injury, which is best in class, best in the world. You can't get any better than zero when it comes to lost time uh, within a manufacturing operation. So we all should be proud of how that plant operates. And look, it's not about the numbers for us at Albemarle, it's about the safety of our people. But it breaks my heart when somebody gets hurt. So for us, it's about keeping each other safe, that's the spirit over at Albemarle, and that's the spirit here at Magnolia. Magnolia has the best safety record in Albemarle um, in terms of uh, lost time not occurring, which is fantastic. So congratulations, Peggy, and your team for everything you uh, The businesses. So, you know, I know there's probably, there may be some questions about the lithium business. In Albemarle, we have uh, sort of the top of the list in order of sexiness is the lithium business. In the lithium business, it relates to batteries, cell phones, Teslas. Uh, it's a growth business. It's got a lot of momentum behind it. And Albemarle, with the acquisition of Rockwood Lithium, is in a great position. We have a strong position relative to, to the rest of the industry. And we have a great resource position and a fantastic team for lithium. So it is the growth engine of the company going forward. Right along with that, we have a catalyst business. Finding catalysts it's for fluid cracking and hydro processing. Again, another solid business built on fundamental trends like growth in transportation fuels. Uh, the Chemital business, which is a surface treatment business, that's slated to be sold, so I won't go into too much detail on that. And we have the roaming business. And I'll tell you, uh, I don't mean this in a negative way. The roaming business is the least sexy business among the Albemarle businesses. However, it plays a vital role in the success of Alcohol overall. It is a very strong cash generating business. It has good margins, delivers year over year. Without the Romy business, we cannot self-fund the things we want to do in the other businesses. It's like, if you don't have the Romy business, you're like missing the leg on your, one of the legs on your 
chair. It just doesn't sit upright. And for us, uh, it's a critical component. So having the Romeo business within the Albemarle portfolio is extremely important. And it's a critical component to the financial success of Albemarle, which we've had um, for many years and we're having again this year. Uh, this year is a, so far so good on the Romeo business and Albemarle overall. Uh, if you follow the share price, like I know my wife does every day, uh, you can see how we've done it. It's gone well, and all the businesses are delivering with an alcohol. Um, let me switch a little bit to a little bit of like about what the bromine business is and what the priorities are for this business. Um, you know, this business is about, as I said, in bromine, it's about cash generation. It's about every year delivering money into the pocket of Albemarle so that can be invested in growth projects. It can be given back to our shareholders. We can pay off debt. Those are the priorities of Albemarle. That being said, uh, you know, we, we may say that we run the roaming business to generate cash. That does not mean we intend to not invest in the roaming business. It's like anything that you have. It's like your favorite car. Hey, that thing may be there for a purpose of getting you to work every day and day, you know, day in and day out. But if you don't invest in the maintenance on that car, if you don't take care of it, if you don't get it washed, it's not going to get the job done. So we continue to plan to invest in the Bromi business, and we plan to keep doing that here. We are fortunate in Bromi to have two world-class locations uh, for Bromi. One of them is Magnolia, Arkansas, and the other one is in the Dead Sea in Jordan. Both of them serve different needs. The one on the Dead Sea is our entry point to Asia, to European markets, has a different resource position, does a great job in that part of the world. This site is critical to the needs within the United States and some of the products that come out of the Magnolia plant we can't make elsewhere in our network. So we're very fortunate to have this site here. Uh, I'm not a chemical engineer. If you read my background with that dated picture of me on it, you would, you would know that I'm not a chemist and I'm not a chemical engineer. I worked with Peggy several years ago and she could tell you how little I actually know but I can tell you, I know this. I know that like, when you look at the operation that we have here in Magnolia, if you look at the ways in which all the units are connected to each other, the integration of the recycle of byproducts from one unit to the next, and how we optimize <coughs> upon that, that is unique in the Brumby industry. That is why this site here generates the profit that it does. That's why it's hard to replace why many of the unit the operations that are here will stay here. It's the integration of the site that makes it so, the connectivity between all the pieces, that's what makes it so special from a technical standpoint. What makes it so good from like a general operation is really the culture around the site. And again, I grew up in a household where you know, my grandfather, like, he wanted to do his job well. He took pride in what he did day in and day out in his little piece of the world. He was a subcontractor. He worked at a subcontractor for Pratt & Whitney. Um, he was just so proud of what he did every day. I see that in the operation here. People want to do a good job. They want the business to be successful. They want to be safe. It's a program called the Brothers Keeper Program. Everybody wants to look out for each other so that nobody gets hurt. You just can't replicate that anywhere. That's here. I'm sure that that's elsewhere, but it's here. Uh, and we're real proud of that as a site. Uh, and I'm always happy to be here, happy to see it. Uh, it's my commitment to Peggy to be here more often, to bring my leadership team here, to be part of what goes on in Magnolia uh, with Albemarle because of the, su the success that we've had here. Uh, let me just give you a quick view. Um, I do want to make sure that I leave time for questions. Is on track, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, you just a quick view on like going forward in the Bromian business and what does that mean to, to Magnolia? Uh, we have a, a view, we have a vision for the Albemarle Bromian business. Uh, and I don't think I can get it word for word even though I've looked at it uh, a thousand times in the last couple months. But it's really about being the world's leader in Bromian and doing that in a safe way, a clean way, and delivering a return for our shareholders, uh, delivering value for our customers, for our employees, as well as being part of the community. That's what we want to get to. Uh, it's like it's a perfection, but we strive to be that for our company and for our stakeholders. And you as a community are one of our stakeholders in running our own business.
To do that, we want to be safe. So safety and ethics are paramount. I think our team demonstrates that today. We will want to do it even better. We want to focus on the core markets that we have. We want to be focused on delivering growth in flame retardants, water treatment, the core markets that are around the growing business. We're going to look for new ways to grow. We don't want to stop there, so we want to look for new applications, new markets where we can grow our business. It's real important also that we run efficiently. Uh, bromine is a specialty product, but there are there is competition. So we have to be cost competitive. We need to keep looking for efficiency, looking for ways to uh, you know, stay uh, lean as we operate going into the future. We continue to look at that. Uh, we're also very focused on talent. Uh, part of the reason that my leadership team is here in Magnolia this week is so that we can get to know a lot of the folks at the plant level. We want to give careers to people that work in Magnolia, whether it be at the Magnolia site for Albemarle or elsewhere. Uh, we're always on the lookout for good people within Albemarle where we can place them in different roles. <coughs> so talent is critically important for us. And lastly, I think we do all that, we'll deliver a return for our shareholders. So we try to think about that less than everything else. I think about that uh, acutely every quarter when I'm getting ready for an earnings call, but up until then, we try to stay focused on the things that in the long term that are going to build a good business for Albemarle, also support the community, and also to grow uh, what we do here in Magnolia and the Albemarle site. So uh, I wanted to cover that with you. I want to tell you a little bit about what our thoughts were on that. I did want to also leave with one piece of advice. That, you know, every time I give a talk, I like to at least offer a little bit of advice, a little bit of community advice for the folks here at Magnolia. Which is, if there's only one thing missing that I could, and let's keep it in context, I just moved back from Europe a couple of months ago. The one thing I can never seem to find here is a cappuccino. So, <laughs> anybody wants to start a business with a cappuccino machine, I can promise you at least 10 cups of cappuccino will be ordered every year by me. It doesn't matter what the cost is, I will pay it. So, that uh, business is starting up already. They're already renovating the building. Fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to thank you. I mean, this is a, it is really special for, for me to have the chance to talk to all of you. I know that you know, many of y'all have been supportive of what we do here for Albemarle and the plant. Uh, we hope that we're supportive in the other direction. We hope that we can provide employment for your, for your kids. We hope that we can be part of the community, give back to the community in the ways that the foundation does. We want to be that, and we see value in being part of this community. Yes, sir. What, what is or what will be the connection between bromine production and lithium production in Magnolia? There, there, is a, there are lithium resources within the brine in Magnolia. So that is, that is known. Uh, currently, you know, the, we got this question, Mike, also related to, um, we have a site in Kings Mountain in uh, North Carolina that also is inactive but has lithium reserves. Um, so the, the priority for lithium extraction for us is to start with the sources that have the highest concentration and work our way down. And it would, currently we don't look at the Magnolia resource as being along the scale of in the near term time frame or even like on the scale of like we would go and need to look at that resource for lithium versus the ones that we have in Chile or in so there is lithium, uh, but it's not economically viable to take that relative to the other sources that we have today. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs>
next generation drilling fluids. Some of those customers are based in uh, headquartered out of Texas, so there certainly is some potential innovation there. We do look at innovation in brominated flame retardants. That's a, a flame retardants that are north of 50% of our portfolio in the alcohol bromine business. We've got a few R&D related projects on next generation flame retardants. And we're also uh, pretty interested in uh, bromine flow batteries. So flow batteries are stationary batteries. They're the kinds of things that you might have, you could imagine next to uh, a windmill, right? You're gonna, or a solar cell. Um, you're gonna generate energy, you're gonna store it for when you need it, and when you need it, you pull it off of the battery. Zinc bromide is used in many of those battery applications. There's some opportunity for technology, any position in that market that our team's looking at. Uh, Mr. Uh, Wesley Hamilton back there, my head of R&D, is working on that project. So uh, we certainly see that there's a potential Make it into that market, which gives us an advantage over 
maybe a com competitor that has one location in one place and the other ones in another place, we're in both places. And if you looked at bromine reserves around the world, uh, in order of bromine concentration in the resource, uh, the Dead Sea in Jordan is the highest in the world. The next best resource in the world is Magnolia, or it's this area. So uh, for us, we're fortunate to have a position here, as well as one in Jordan, which gives us a little bit of a leg up on the competition. And again, uh, the, uh, uh, again, I'm not a chemical engineer. Kevin Sharp or one of these guys, they can, they can explain it better than I could, but the, the complexity of the Magnolia operation is a strength of the Magnolia operation. You need to understand it. You need to be able to work it. But when you work it, it it's great as a competitive advantage for our raw material utilization, the ability to make money for the company and support these things. These are projected lifespans for resource use. Uh, I don't know what the latest estimate is on the, the lifespan. It's, a, it's not an infinite resource, but there's different estimates as to like how long you can actually go. But I don't know the exact numbers as to what that, what the most current estimate is. But it's a long enough duration that we want to continue to operate, maximize on the resource, keep it going, keep the current product slate uh, that maximizes on this asset integration here. <laughs> Texas, uh, those, those locations. 